Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mesoteric. I've got a brand new series starting for you this evening that I am calling Emulation Night School. And I'm doing this because I get a metric ton of requests on how to set up the most popular emulators for Windows PCs, walking you through the steps to get your favorite games running on your computer. I get so many of these requests, I'm going to be going through every single popular emulator on Windows 10, getting you playing your games today. And we're going to start with PlayStation 3. Before we get too far involved there, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell definitely helps us out and if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel we got a patreon link down below as well and just be aware i've instituted a new patreon level at ten dollars i'm calling it emulation night school as well so if you need direct support and you get confused and these videos do not get you to where you need to be you can get direct access to me now you need to go to the rpsc website that way you can download the emulator you'll see that there's a download button right there but you can also scroll to the top and click download it does give this really weird pop-up window ignore that if you see it you want to just go right to this download page you're going to have options for windows linux or mac os all of these tutorials are going to be based on windows i do have a macintosh computer as well but i am primarily a windows user Whatever version you want to use, you're just going to go ahead and hit download, and that's going to download it right to your downloads folder. Now let's talk about system requirements first, because our PCS3 is not going to run on absolutely everything. You're going to see it recommends an AMD or an Intel processor with at least 6 cores and 12 threads. All of these tests are going to be done on an i9-12900K, so I've got plenty of cores. As far as the GPU, anything modern that's going to support the Vulkan API is what you need. You'll see for NVIDIA cards that's a 900 series or better, I've got a 3080 Ti. And as far as RAM's concerned, just make sure you have 8GB, so at this point in time, everyone should. Now you do need to get the PlayStation 3 system software, which is distributed by Sony on their website. It is very easy to get, Sony gives it to you. And you also need to install Visual C++, the 2019 redistributable. Just make sure you install that as well. It's like installing any other program on your computer. You'll see here that this is the PlayStation 3 system software. And you go down to using a computer to update. If you hit that little plus, you're going to see a little warning message here that says you need to right click and select save as to start the download. This button does not institute a download. It's a very strange thing for Sony to do, but it's how they do it. You can use this for emulation or for restoring your original PlayStation 3. So you will right click and save that file that ends in .pup P -U -P, to wherever you would like. Just set up a folder for RPSC3. What I have right here is the zip file for the emulator that we just downloaded along with that update file from Sony itself. All you need to do is extract that 7-zip file into a folder, and then we can go ahead and delete that zip that we downloaded right from the RPSC3 website. Once you open the folder, you're going to see the executable, and the first time you open that, it's going to give you a quick start guide and warning. You can't hit continue until you hit I have read the quick start guide, and it's just going to list all the different things here. If you don't want to see it again, you can check do not show again. It is 100% up to you, but just be aware, no continue until you check that little box right there. Now, once we are into the application itself, the first thing we need to do is actually install that PlayStation 3 update file that we got from Sony's website. If you go up to file in the top left hand corner, you're going to see install firmware. Go ahead and click that, navigate to wherever that file is on your computer, and then just go ahead and either double click it or hit open. I created a folder. You can put this emulator wherever you want. It doesn't install. You just unzip it and run the executable compared to an installer for Windows 10. Once you hit open, you're going to see it's going to install the firmware, and then as soon as you hit OK, it's going to go through some compilations. Depending on the speed of your CPU, this is going to take from like 45 seconds is what it took me to like 3 to 4 minutes. What this is doing, it's compiling different modules, basically transposing the instruction set from the PlayStation 3 over to an x86 architecture, because it does have to translate some of the calls and commands, both from the CPU as well as the GPU, so that it's going to run on your modern instruction set as well as that Vulkan API. Once you've done that, you're going to see the PS3 interface right here. This is basically the operating system. Go ahead and double click this. Now this is going to take some time, maybe 3, 4, 10 minutes. It's basically compiling a lot of the instruction set that the PlayStation 3 needs to run under emulation. You don't have to do this at the top, but it's going to save you some time when you actually get in game, so I recommend that. Once it is done, you're going to go through a rebuilding the database, just hit OK. 
And then you're going to set the PlayStation 3 up like it's a piece of physical hardware you just took out of a box from the store. And it'll go ahead and hit yes on the HDMI device. And then you can see that I'll hit yes again on can you read this screen. From there, you can pick whatever option you want. Our CPS3 does support 3D images, so you can just go ahead and default to 27 inches. Seems to work the best. And you can set the time up to your time zone if you ever want to do network use with this emulator. I just basically keep hitting OK until I get into the actual PlayStation 3 menu. And you will see here, you're going to see compiling shaders a lot when you first start using this emulator. But once you use it for enough time, it's going to basically go away. All of these shaders are cached, so the next time you need to use them, it's going to pull from the cache versus compiling them. But we are into the PlayStation 3 menu, you see all the normal icons, and that's about all we need to do here. And again, this is not a necessary step, I just feel it saves some time later on in game. If we go up to file, you're going to see a bunch of different options up here and by default you're going to basically want to leave almost all of them as is. I'll explain the options you can change and why you would want to change them but the first thing you want to always do just make sure you're on the most up-to-date version. The emulator should ask you every single time you open it if you want to install the newest version but you can check. Now if we come over to configuration here we're going to have a bunch of tabs, CPU, GPU, audio and so forth. By default you basically want to leave this alone. Later in the video, I'm going to show you the compatibility page and how you can look up each individual game title and see if there's any changes you want to make to any of these settings. But otherwise, once you first start using this emulator, just leave everything in the CPU tab alone. This is going to give you the best results. But from there, we can pop over to the GPU tab and you see Renderer is Vulkan. It should be that. If it's anything else, change it. And underneath Graphics Device, just make sure your GPU is selected. If you have an APU with graphics on it and you have a discrete graphics, graphics card, make sure it defaults there. We have frame limiters. I recommend you just leave it as is. You also have an aspect ratio. You can do it to four by three if you so want. You also have filtering. Set to auto is usually the best, but you can make your steps from here. And anti-aliasing can be disabled if you so want it to. These are all just options you can articulate. They're not really going to break anything. When you change one, just hit save or else it won't persist. Shader quality is defaulted to high. You can go to ultra if you have the specs. And if you want that 3D look from PlayStation emulation, you can use it here. You will see we have a default resolution of 1280 by 720. I put mine to 1920 by 1080 and I can scale from there. You just need to make sure your system has the grunt. Otherwise, if you want V-Sync, you can turn it on, but everything else is just basically a toggleable option. Now on the audio tab, as long as it's cube B here, you will get audio out. From there you can change around, you can go to surround sound if you have this set up, whatever you want to do. But for the most part, all of these other tabs you can leave completely alone and not pay any attention to whatsoever unless you want to change them around. Like if your language is in English, you can change the system language, but you're watching an English tutorial. So my guess is you want to just leave it like it is. You can also change the console region, but pretty much everything is region free on PlayStation 3, so you're really not going to have any reason to do that. Network, advanced, emulator, the GUI here, I would just stay to those completely. There really isn't anything in there you want to change. Now to run a game that's based on disk, you need to dump your own disk, you should own the game, and you're going to go to wherever you have that file, and you're going to continue to open up the folders until you get to the PS3 game folder. Open that, hit select folder, and you're going to see DMC Devil May Cry is going to start to load and it's going to compile some more PPU modules before it runs. Pretty much every game is going to show you the screen first and it's going to take like a minute or so, but the next time you launch it, it's going to get into the game much quicker. The performance on this emulator is based upon your PC spec, but go ahead and listen to the audio quality and take a look at the visual because I do think it is quite good and I'll be back with not done setting this up yet, but enjoy the audio because it's pretty quality. No, this is not a veiled threat. This is a direct one. Should you fail to comply, the collapse of the economy will be on your head. I will make sure this- Sounds great, but I'm using DMC as an example because I know this game runs perfectly fine as far as compatibility is concerned. Now, once you first get into the game, you might see a hitch here and there, and you're going to see that compiling shaders is at the bottom left-hand corner. 
Depending on your system spec, sometimes you can just brute force your way through this compilation process and play the game at a locked frame rate. My processor, my GPU, allows me to do this in basically every game, but if you do see hitching while that compiling shaders is on the screen, you just need to wait for it to disappear and then your speed should come back up so long as your system hits those recommended specs for the emulator. If you have a system that does not meet those specs, it's probably time to think about upgrading if you want to get to this level of emulation and honestly, if you don't have the 8 gigabytes of RAM, it really is time to upgrade. And you'll see here, even with the compiling shaders, everything ran perfectly fine. The speed was good. And when one of those explosions comes out, the compiling shaders comes back up. That means there's a shader that's putting that graphical effect on screen that the game has not seen yet. But again, strong enough PC, you can 100% just churn past that and not see a dip to the frame rate. So just be aware. But how are we controlling this game is another big question. This emulator allows you to have a lot of different options as far as the control pad is concerned. You can use keyboard, which I don't recommend, DualShock 3, DualShock 4, DualSense, but I use an Xbox One controller, so I go to X input. You have to select what controller you use here, just make sure it is hooked up, and you will see that now that I've selected X input, I have all of my inputs. If you want to change the bindings to any button, like if I want to change the PlayStation Guide button here, I will just click it and then push the button on the controller I want to bind to that. By default, I have found that every single controller I have plugged in here 100% maps correctly with absolutely zero issues. But if for any reason you want to remap any buttons, you can. And if you want to do something like have a guitar controller, a drum controller, or a skateboard, you can do that as well. But that's definitely not night school material. That's like a 401 level emulation class. Now, do be aware that this emulator is not finished. It is still a work in progress, and some games are going to work a lot better than others. Something like the House of the Dead 4 here, you're going to see as it compiles the shaders, it just does absolutely strange things. The audio in this game also has a lot of problems. That is just because the emulation is still under development, so do not expect to have 100% perfect accuracy to real PlayStation 3 hardware. Something like GTI Club here runs perfectly fine, but it has a lot of hitching and a lot of audio issues that you do not experience in other games. The pacing likes to speed up and slow down and hitch. It's not so bad that it's unplayable, but if it does not seem exactly like real original hardware, that is because this is still in active development and as more updates come out, it is going to improve and I will show you the compatibility list in just a moment. But be aware that this emulator does not run 100% of the retail PlayStation 3 library. It has a lot of good compatibility and I can 100% get a full race in here for GTI Club, but other games don't run whatsoever. And that's just something you need to be aware of. Your mileage 100% may vary and mileage in a car racing game, that is the joke. Now, if you want to install a game that didn't come on disk, you're going to go to Install Package and or Wrap Files, and you're going to select the package of the game you have and hit Yes. You do need to put the wrap file into the boot folder, but that's something I can't technically show you on YouTube. There's some, some rules here. You just need to be aware that downloadable games work slightly differently. I recommend disk games. That's what most of the library is. Now, if you click on compatibility, you're going to see this big list here of the compatible games for this emulator. You're going to see that we have different colors as well. There's going to be all playable in-game intro and loadable. I recommend just sticking to the green icon, the playable games. That means you can play them and you should be able to beat them as well. And if you scroll down to DMC, Devil May Cry, or whatever other title you want to play, if you click it, it's going to bring you to another menu that's going to give you details on the game title within the RPCS3 emulator itself. And if you need to change anything under CPU or GPU that I showed you in the video earlier, it'll be listed under configuration here. But if you follow this tutorial, you pay attention, and you make sure that you do everything how I showed you, you're going to be playing PlayStation 3 games on your Windows, Mac, or Linux machine, and you're going to get performance if you have the spec that meets or exceeds an actual PlayStation 3. Now I own a PlayStation 3 and I own an absolutely massive library of games for it, but I've been using this emulator for some time now and I think it does an absolutely spectacular job of bringing PlayStation 3 to Windows. If you have any questions or comments, I'll leave them down below. I can help if I have the time, but again, I do have that Patreon link down below. If you need specialized help trying to get this running, just go ahead and join there and I'll be happy to help you as well. But if you do all this, you're going to be playing PlayStation 3 on your Windows machine with a controller in your hand. It's going to feel as good as real hardware. Short of that, Emulation Night School is going to be a weekly video in the evenings. So go ahead and leave me a comment down below and tell me what emulator you want to see next. But we are done. You're playing PlayStation 3 on Windows and we're good.
拜。